Rolex. Big time with the big time athlete. I'm not big time like you. <laughs> hey, you will be when you get the strap if that happens, you know? Hopefully. This is the Schmo with the pro with the scariest man in MMA. The one to pick up Shaquille O'Neal, the predator, 15-3, and three, Francis Ngannou, here in the secret room of Extreme Couture. How we doing? We're doing great. <laughs> the Schmo saw you doing some practice with the legend Teddy Atlas. What were some of the pointers he was teaching you over here in the gym? You know, some uh, some tricks, some boxing tricks, so like uh, be more accurate on you know, use my balance and uh, get some heavy punch, some uppercut. And what do you say about your hands, how heavy they are? Um, they're never heavy enough, you know, they can still get heavier than they are, you know, so that's the point. And how did that compare to when you were doing some work with Mike Tyson, when you're doing the hot box and podcast? I know you were doing a little bit of work with Mike Tyson. Yeah, um... I think, you know, Teddy Atlas with uh, Mike Tyson is the same school. So it's basically like um, technically the, the same thing, um, the same basic. And that's what, uh, that's what uh, get my in uh, I'm interested into. Yes, I know you like the boxing, but let's get down to the brass tacks right now. Stipe Miocic, he's the champion. You're the number one contender. When are you and Stipe going to dance? Man, I think that question belongs to, to the UFC, but uh, I request for December 12th, uh, which is um, the last pay-per-view of the year, uh, almost um, over two months from now. So uh, I'm expecting to have that date. Excellent. And that would certainly be yours if Stipe were to accept that and the UFC were to make that happen. Last time you guys fought... He was doing the wrestling, and he's not so excited to do this rematch with you because he expects it to be the wrestling-type situation. What have you done to make sure that that wouldn't happen again? Um, work a lot on my game, and uh, we'll get a better uh, training camp, and that would definitely not happen again. You know, uh, when I look back to that game, um, to that fight, um, I see a lot of uh, opportunity that I could have, like, uh, have if I was... Uh, ready if I was well prepared. What'd you make of Israel Adesanya's performance against Paulo Costa the other week over there at UFC 253? Fucking shit. That was that was sick. Like <laughs> unbelievable. Like he make uh, Paulo Paulo Costa look like he doesn't even know how to fight. I was like a master class, you know, put it on clinic, like sharp, everything perfect. You know, that was crazy. Yes, it was. Now let's give you a hypothetical situation. John Jones moving up to heavyweight. Then he's trading barbs on Twitter with Israel Adesanya. What's more likely to happen first? You fight John Jones at heavyweight or Israel Adesanya fights John Jones? Well, you know, I'm not a UFC matchmaker. So I don't know exactly if John Jones is going to uh, fight at heavyweight or middleweight or well, uh, light heavyweight because he end up to ask he, what... Do they think if he go back to the light heavyweight and fight uh, Ion Blachowicz, which I don't know. So actually, I don't know which way class John Jones belong to. But that that that's not my problem. You know, what I want is just to fight and to fight for the title. And uh, now the title holder in the heavyweight division that I belong to is Tipe Miotic. So that's where my focus is at right now. Well said. Final message for the Predator fans out there worldwide. Well, um, let's get this, this done and thank you all for the support. Thank you for for pushing me. Thank you for being behind me during all this process. Let's get uh, that December 2 of, December 2 of set up and then we will make it uh, better. He's the pro on the schmo. He's getting ready for practice. 3.30 p.m. sharp. We're out. <laughs> Bye.